Hello everyone and welcome to another video of Wycam Shogun. Today I'm going to show you how to create a database for storing your captures, how to add clusters to the data store library, how to prepare props so that they are ready for you to capture them, and then how to set your data level. Okay, welcome. Okay, so there are two ways of creating an Eclipse database. The first one is opening Vicon Shogun Post and clicking on your Panels tab and then clicking on Data Management. That will bring Eclipse and that can also hide it depending on what you want to do with it. Um, the other way of accessing Eclipse uh, in Vicon Shogun Post is by actually hitting F2 and it will show or hide it. The other way of opening Eclipse is by using the standalone version of it. As you can see, it's the same database that you saw in Shogun Post, but it will also show you um, the buttons in a different way. So if you look here at the left side, it's uh, a different icon, but it will do the same option. So you can click here to create a new database, or if you want to open another one, you can click on the one on the right. Uh, you will see in Shogun Pose that the two icons are there. Just, they just look a little bit different. So if you click on that button to create a new database, the first thing you will have to do is to establish a location for your database. So you can click in here and those the three dots. And I like to save that in my documents. Okay. The next thing that you will have to do is to give it a name. So I'm going to I'm going to call this my database. And if you want, it's not mandatory by any means. Uh, you can give it a description. It's a good way of having your data libraries organized. So I'm just going to give it um, tutorial videos as my description. Make sure that you select the Shogun animation template. So after you create your database, you will see that it will bring us back to the previous window where we can open a database. This is the window that you will get if you click on the open database button. So just so that you're familiar with it. Uh, and then just simply click on that and click open. After you do that, you will see that there is nothing on your database right now, but we're going to have to create uh, a folder structure. So the first thing to do is right click on an empty space, which we have right now, and click on new and select project. Given name, I'm going to call this um, my project. And the second step is to right click on my project and create a new capture day. I'm going to leave it as is. I like to have my database created day one, day two, day three. So I'm going to keep it as capture day one. And the next thing to do is to right click on capture day one or whatever name you, you added to your capture day. And then click on new session. I like to do morning captures and afternoon capture. So I'm going to call this folder AM. After you have all your folder structure, I want to, I want you to know how this works. So if I navigate to the location of that database, you will see that under my database, you will have an ENF file, which is a file structure um, that tells Eclipse which one is the main folder and which are the subfolders inside, um, under it. So you will see that my database is the main folder, um, which is the name of my database. And then inside you have my project and inside my project, you will have capture day one and inside capture day one, you will have the name of your session. And all of them will include an ENF file to show which one is, which folder is inside what folder. Okay. And the last thing to do after you have created your database is actually change the path in Shogun Live. So if you open Shogun Live,
and then navigate to capture and then under the capture folder you click on that file button and then you navigate to where your capture database is located so in this case is on under my documents my database my project shogun database capture day and the morning session that's where i'm going to keep all my morning takes so i select that folder and then click on select folder and that's it you are now ready to start your captures thank you hello so for this second part i'm going to show you how to create clusters and add them to your database um so the first thing is to make sure that all of your clusters are different. So as you can see, I have one, two, and three different sets of configurations in my clusters. So if you look at the markers, they have to be either four markers in a cluster or five markers in a cluster. It doesn't matter as long as you have a unique configuration. Um, once you have this, you need to place them in your system, and then I'll show you how to create the clusters. I'll be right back. So now that I've placed my three clusters in the system, um, you can see that I have them right here. So the first thing that you're going to have to do is to click on the markers or you can actually um, press Alt and drag your mouse to select all the markers of the cluster. So once you do that and select the markers, you'll see that the markers will turn white to show you that the markers are selected. So you do that for all of the three clusters. Let me show you. Alt and drag the markers and then I can click on create clusters. So you can see the system has now created one labeling cluster and it has named it labeling cluster one. If I continue to do that, so press Alt and click and drag on the rest of the markers and click then on create clusters, you will see that the system will show me that there is a second cluster and then I repeat the process for the third one so like the markers click on create cluster and if I want to see all the other clusters I click on manage clusters and you'll see that there is labeling cluster one labeling cluster two and labeling cluster three so if you want to rename your clusters you can simply click on manage clusters and then click on the cluster that you want to rename and right click on it. You can rename it or delete it. In this case, I want to rename it and then simply call it, uh, we'll name it Juan and click on rename. I have now just renamed all my three clusters. The idea is that you create a data store so that you don't have to create clusters every time and the system will always recognize what cluster is attached to your subject. That's it. Thank you very much. Welcome back. So for this section, I'm going to show you how to create a prop. Um, as you can see, I have a katana here and this katana has uh, seven markers on it. So you'll see that there are two markers, one at the top and one at the very bottom. And those two markers are really important because we're gonna give the orientation of our object based on those two markers, wherever you want it uh, pointing. You have to select those two markers um, to give you the first orientation. So um, whatever your object is, make sure that you have two markers pointing in the orientation that you wanna select your bone to be pointing at. Okay, uh, the rest of the markers are just purely for consistency and to help labeling and solving. So we have some markers here. I'm going to put my katana in my volume and I'll be back. Okay, as you can see, I now have my katana in my volume and I can see the seven markers of the sword. Um, as I said, uh, two markers at the very top and the very bottom are very important because they're going to define the orientation of our end bone. So if we now select this marker here, which is the very bottom one, um, that one will be the uh, base bone 
and if I select the last marker at uh, the top of the sword, that one will be my hand bone. So I have those two selected, and now I'm just simply select the rest of the markers. Okay. Under the subject calibration tab, you will now see a prop name, which will allow you to give it a name to your prop katana will be in this case and all I have to do is simply click on create prop okay and you will see that because I selected this marker first and then this one uh, second the orientation of my bone will be pointing that way it's that easy you can repeat that process for any other of your props that you have and you're ready to capture thank you very much Hello and welcome back. For this part of the video, I'm going to show you how to change your data level. And that way you can actually record depending on your needs. So for this part, I'm going to ask my colleague Greg to move the katana around the volume. Thank you, Greg. All right, let's do it. So as you can see, Greg is moving the katana in the volume. And for me to change the processing output level, I'm going to have to go into the processing tab in Shogun. So clicking in the processing tab will take me here and then under general processing output level I will be able to change the level that I want Shogun recording to either reconstruct, label and so. Okay so by default as you can see um, Shogun will solve all the takes because we're focused on solving skeletons. So. If you want to change your processing output level to only reconstruct, you need to be aware that the system will only record the reconstructed data. It won't do any other processing. So you won't be able to see in post from this take anything, any labels, any solving skeletons. You will only be able to see the reconstructed data. That's why it's important to check before you record what is your processing output level because if you want to see it as soon as you finish capturing and not do any other processing then you you have to record uh, with your processing output level set to solve now if you record that here uh, when you come into post you will see that your skeleton will be reconstructed label and solved but if you record in any of the other output level set that what you will see in post is only either reconstruct or reconstruct and label not reconstruct label and so on. That's it. If you have any other questions, please don't hesitate to contact us at support at bicon.com. Uh, we'll gladly help you with any of your questions. Um, thank you very much for watching and hope to see you soon.